I want to tell you the story behind all these records before we have a look at them. I lost a friend of mine to cancer last month, and I visited him in the hospital uh, the day before he died. He'd been telling me about these Techniques 1200s he had for many, many years, and he was so proud of them. And he'd also been telling me about these two or three crates of records that he had that were really good. Well, he told me that day, he said, look, when I'm gone, I want you to have this stuff. The 1200s, and yeah, there's like two or three crates of records. He played a practical joke on me because he didn't have two or three crates of records. He had 23 crates of records, most of which are absolutely pristine. So we're going to go through some of the stuff today and have a look what Mike Guy had in his record collection. I'm just going to pull out some random stuff. Just dig in here. I don't know anywhere at all. Uh, how about here? What is this? What do we have? A Tears for Fears. It's, I believe, with the flip side of Shout. It's the dub. This is an import, I can tell. I'll to file that later. Because I will file all this stuff. It's alphabetical here by artist. What's this? The Pebbles record. This is a Mercedes Boy, but I know what's behind it. I love this song, giving you the benefit. This is a great, great Pebble song. One of the great um, songs that Babyface produced. And by the way, this stuff is all, like, perfect. Not even sure. The mint condition is what this is. This is stuff I love. Look what we have here. This is Every Day is Halloween. This is Ministry. And then we also have the remix album. I didn't know Mike was into this stuff. It's almost like Mike is talking to me. He's telling me things about himself that I never knew before, which is so cool. Randomly, what do we got here? What the heck is this? I don't even know. Oh, sweet! It's got like Fox on the Run on it. Um, I don't know. Here's a Rod Stewart record. He's got albums in here as well as 12 inches. It's, of course, Bob Seger. But, you know, this stuff does go deep. <laughs> Two Life Crew. <laughs> oh, boy, he's got a lot of that. It's over here. Oh, MC Hammer. No, H-Town. Knocking the Boots. Remember that track? Rick James Reflections. This just goes on and on and on. This just never ends. Now, some Bobby Brown... There's tons of stuff in here, folks. It's just outrageous what's in here. Oh, my gosh. We've got prints. Um, there's some really good prints in here. Some stuff that, that I didn't own. He had it. And, uh, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take good care of this stuff. This stuff means a lot. And, and, you know, like I say, you know, back in the old days, us old school DJs were our record collections. So it's just amazing to me to thumb through here and just pull things out and just find things out about Mike that I never knew. Look at this some great Madonna stuff in here, some 12 inches and in albums. And there's 23 crates of this stuff. Now, let's talk about overall condition. I'm just going to grab something randomly here. Here's, what is this? Madonna Like a Prayer. And this is the amazing part to me. And this is just a random record I pulled out. The stuff is perfect. There's not a scratch on it. There's a thumbprint on it because I just put it there. But I'll take care of that. Man, he babied this stuff. Wanted to pop into these crates as well. There are, I think, three crates that were very similar to these that have already been through and filed. But, I mean, he had some pretty deep stuff in here. I mean, Breaks and Beats records. Tons of remix stuff. I forgot to mention, back in the old days, Mike used to work at Scratchpad, which was a really solid record store in Milwaukee. It's where all the club DJs shopped. It's kind of like the gramophone of Milwaukee. Um, <laughs> and it turns out he bought everything. I mean, the stuff that's in here is just mind-blowing look at some of the stuff I've already filed 
This whole row right here is from Mike's collection. Let's just dive in here. I've got tons of these. And these are Music Factory Master Mixes. There's tons of them. And they're all kind of like remix stuff from the UK. They're all imports. I don't know what else is in here. Rhythm Stick. I've never even heard of this, but he's got a bunch of these Rhythm Stick records, too. There's great stuff on them. Cool remixes. I'm just kind of diving in rambling. More Rhythm Stick. These. My gosh. Uh, and you see the colors here? These are all Funky Mix and Ultimix. And they're perfect. The condition of these things is amazing. He also has a lot of these, which are the powerhouse records. I think this entire section right here is powerhouse. There's also Wicked Mix. Tons of those. Classics and regular. See here, the blue ones back here, these are the classics. Now I had one or two of these, but Mike had huge, I guess, cultivated collections of them. Somebody was asking me about the Cameron Paul stuff. Well, that's here too. I mean, all the Cameron Paul's loops. We lost Cameron Paul last month, by the way. And uh, it's just crazy to see all this stuff. There's mix hits in here. <sighs> what is this? This is another thing I've, I've never, ever heard of this. Hot tracks. I've got a bunch of hot tracks as well. Then there's stuff I dug out of the crates he didn't have organized. And there's six more I don't even have here yet. Mitsu uh, Dimoy Dimoy. I I met her before when she was hot back in, I guess, the early 90s. This is a cool track. I've never seen this on 12 inch. Some salsa. A lot of good salsa in here that is going to be part of my 70s disco collection. Throw Kill Cult. Sex on Wheels. Cool DJ International stuff. If you know anything about house music, this is cool stuff. Smarties. Sesame Street, who remembers this song? Who's old school and remembers this? It just goes on and on and on and on. And it's like Mike is speaking to me. We're having a conversation that we never had. He's telling me things about himself that I never knew. And you can kind of tell what was important to Mike and what wasn't important to Mike according to how he has it organized. He was a very organized guy. He had large collections of things. When he worked at that record store, I'm assuming that... There were like boxes of records that the record store was like, nobody's buying these, we're not moving them, or we got them used and they're jacked up. We're going to throw them away. And, and knowing Mike, he said, hey, no, 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 I'm taking them home. So there were a few crates of that and a box of that. But so much of this stuff is just cultivated, beautiful, organized, alphabetized. And I'm going to have to make some room to clear the studio floor so I could do some DJ videos for you. But... That's what I'm up to. And uh, it's it's just so cool to, to have these conversations with Mike about music. So anyway, that's my video. That's what I'm up to. Uh, thanks for watching. The crate digging continues right here in the dungeon. Practice and enjoy.